Hi, thank you for joining us. We're joined here by Shrax, which is a company that unlocks public data for public companies. I'm joined today by Chris Maglino, the CEO, who's going to give us a little bit of a presentation on Shrax. Chris? Thank you, Marissa. I appreciate it. And thanks for joining us today for a presentation around Shrax and what we do. Um, Shrax is in the business of helping companies identify issuers of public companies, identify information about their shareholders and provide a variety of different tools for their shareholders. So what I'm gonna do is tell you a little bit about our recent success. Recently, we've, we've had significant growth inside the company. We had year over year growth of approximately 161%. We had quarter over quarter growth of 124%. Uh, we completed an acquisition of the LD Micro brand, which is the conference that you're at right now uh, in the last quarter. We also completed the sale of a medical asset. Uh, we had a medical data business that we sold a little while ago and we had a uh, owned still a piece of that. We sold that for $8 million and it wasn't on our balance sheet. So now we have an additional $8 million on the balance sheet. We, uh, we've had seven consecutive quarters of growth of our Sequoia platform. We increased the number of Sequoia, uh, Sequoia clients and partners that we have from 91 at the last time we announced to 125 uh, to our most recent announcement. So significant growth in the last quarter. Um, we moved our big token business, uh, which is a business that allows consumers to own their own data into its own public company and should start trading within its own public company within the month of December. Shrax will continue to own around 88% uh, percent of that company, depending on the amount of money that they raise. Um, but as we roll in, uh, the company should own around 88% of that company. We've uh, increased bookings on the business to around 6.7 million for the quarter uh, for the Sequoia business, which is the most that we've done to date. Uh, we're currently holding approximately $10 million worth of marketable securities of publicly traded issuers. So we have a substantial amount of uh, publicly traded stock on the balance sheet and we've given guidance for the fourth quarter of $4 million. So how are we generating this revenue and where are we seeing this growth come from? We're seeing this growth come from Sequoia and Sequoia is a operating system for publicly traded companies. Companies use our platform to understand who is buying and selling their stock at any given time, where those shares are being held, what, uh, what the custodians of, are doing with those shares and how those shares are moving around at any given time. It allows the issuers to see detailed information about not only their retail investors, but also their institutional holdings and for people that are holding stock in street name. It helps identify where those companies or uh, institutions are holding those shares and then helps identify the movement of those shares intra-period in between when they're filing 13Fs and 13Gs, so companies can get a sense of what, uh, what the institutions are doing uh, without having to wait 45 days after the end of the quarter to get a sense of that. Um, we have a deal center that helps the companies understand where shares are being sent when they do deals and what the movement of those shares are over time. We have the ability for companies to email and communicate with all of their shareholders from within the platform. We provide a tool that allows a lookup of all of the email addresses, Facebook accounts, LinkedIn accounts, Twitter accounts, phone numbers of all the shareholders so that you can then effectively communicate with all of your shareholders. We have a tool that manages all of the warrants and options in a company uh, inside the platform so that CFOs can easily manage all their warrants. We have a tool that tells a, a, a company with a shelf how much availability they have on their shelf at any given time and a variety of other tools that are very valuable for the uh, public company, including a virtual roadshow tool, which is similar to the platform that you're engaging with here today. We've seen significant growth in this. Uh, 
in the second quarter of last year, we had 12 uh, customers that we've signed up onto the platform. Now we're at 125 companies that we've signed up onto the platform. We've seen uh, a significant growth quarter to quarter of the number of companies that are signing up, and we're not seeing a slowdown in that yet. We've uh, we had our largest bookings this last quarter of $6.6 .6 million. And when we say bookings, we mean year long contracts with companies uh, that are booking over the year. And we're seeing, uh, you know, similar success into the fourth quarter. And this is how we knew that we would have the ability to provide guidance of $4 million into the fourth quarter of this year. So not only when, when we, uh, not only do we provide the the tools of um of the platform itself but around 30 percent of our customers hire us to help them uh, get additional exposure for their public companies and we use all of our digital advertising technology and experience to help them accomplish those goals uh, by disseminating existing public information and getting that data out in front of people that have the ability to actually buy the stock. So one of the biggest things that we did this quarter was to acquire LD Micro, the conference that you're watching this uh, video on today. Uh, LD Micro is by far the uh, largest and most respected micro cap conference uh, in the country. Uh, they throw two very large conferences and then a number of smaller conferences throughout the year. There's been uh, close to 2,000 companies that have gone through the, uh, through the LD Micro ecosystem, and it provides us an opportunity, one more chance to have a touch with those institutions and uh, to reach out to all of those public companies and establish relationships with them so that they can become members of the Sequoia platform. And we're having a lot of success in that front. This, this conference has many, you know, lots of companies, 200 plus companies are presenting here today. And all of many of them are customers of the Sequoia platform. And our goal is to make all of the members of the Sequoia platform and also to make everybody that has gone through the LD micro ecosystem to be a member of the, uh, of the Sequoia platform. But what is it, what are we doing and how are we combining these things together aside from using the, uh, the Rolodex that LD micro has? We're elevating the format of the platform itself. In the past, LD micro has an ecosystem of around 10,000 investors. And what we're doing now is this conference itself, we've invited close to 2 million people to the conference. So in addition to the 10,000 people that are typically at the conference, we're inviting an additional 2 million shareholders that we know are investors in small cap public companies to this conference. And we're providing them with education, with tools so that they can become better traders, so that they can become better investors over time. And we are within the Sequoia community, uh, envision creating a community of uh, investors that are interested in different types of stocks and different types of investments. And we're going to build that over time through a virtual conference tool like the one you're on today. And, in, and we're providing additional tools that are built into the platform itself, which will re reach millions of shareholders. Uh, and as the system grows, as the Sequoia platform grows, each one of these participating companies will bring additional um, shareholders into the platform that they then can communicate with directly and have a relationship with those shareholders. And uh, we're also working to enhance the index. The LD micro index is something that a lot of investors use today to find out news on small cap companies. So we're enhancing that LD micro index, uh, providing a variety of other tools, and we'll be launching new websites around the LD micro index itself. So that uh, gets us right to around 10 minutes, and uh, I'll turn it back over to Marissa. Thank you so much, Chris. You can feel free. Oh, you already did it to, to take away your shared screen. And now we're going to open it up to our investor panelists for Q&A. So investor panelists, if you would please share your video and audio, and I'll leave you guys to it to ask Mr. McGlino some questions about tracks. 
Uh, good morning, Chris. Or good afternoon. Uh, thanks very much for having me participate. It's an honor and a pleasure always to see and talk to you. Thank uh, you. Question, question for me is really about the revenue mix. I understood that you have sold off SRAX MD. Understand that you're spinning off Big Token. But I'm curious about Squire, how it contributes what uh, the revenue mix was in the third quarter. I understand that it looked like Squire generated close to 2 million, but I think you posted 2.6. And then maybe you could talk about what your expectations are for next year, particularly with regard to subscriber growth. Sure, thank you, Kevin. It's great to have you here. I appreciate you joining us. Um, we are, yes, you're right. It was around 2.6 million for the quarter that, and, and it's gonna jump up to 4 million for the, uh, for the fourth quarter. The 2.6 included uh, around 2 million that was coming from Sequoia. So even with the spinoff of uh, Big Token into its own public company, which we will need to consolidate for a little bit until we get below the 50% level over there, um, the, the majority of the growth right now is happening through the Sequoia side of the platform. So you're seeing uh, uh, around 2 million for Sequoia and the rest in the third quarter was for uh, big token, and you're having that similar type of growth into the fourth quarter itself. And inside that uh, two million that we that we did is a mix of media services to those companies and SaaS-based uh, revenue for those companies that are on the Sequoia platform. Then the uh, could, could you just speak a little bit to the SaaS contribution, the subscription contribution? And, and then your outlook. I think you at one point claimed that you could get subscriber growth from I think around 125 now to north of 200 by the end of next year. I just like to have a good feeling for your confidence there. Yeah, I, I think that uh, I'd be very upset if we weren't there. Um, we haven't given any guidance on that, but uh, I think it's definitely achievable in this next year to uh, to hit that number. Uh, our goal is obviously to hit way more than that and to continue that growth. And uh, you know, we're getting more and more companies are are coming on as uh, more and more referrals are coming as more companies join onto the platform. Well, thanks, Chris. Let me pass it on to my esteemed colleagues. Sure. Chris, maybe just kind of keying off where, where Kevin was going on, on the revenue mix and looking a, a little bit further out in time, um, you know, br really breaking down the contribution from, from LD and talking about kind of the, the longer term growth opportunities there, you know, assuming we get back to a period of time where live event conferences are happening and you, you develop a, a model to, to monetize the virtual conferences as well. What's kind of the, the 18 to 24 month? or maybe even further out outlook for the contribution that, that LD is going to bring to, to the revenue mix? So L, LD was uh, doing close to around $2 million a year in revenue um, with the, all the virtual, con I mean, the physical conferences uh, and profitable. The uh, Our goal now is to take that $2 million and expand upon it and uh you know, obviously, there's a difference in these uh, in doing these virtual conferences. We can't charge the companies as much as we do when there's a physical conference, but the margin profile is much better because we own the software now. We own the infrastructure to run these conferences. We don't need to license any uh, any uh, software to make that happen, um, except for the you know the basic Zoom licenses on the back end. But everything that manages is the infrastructure is something that we own. So our goal going into the, as people are coming off of, uh, you know, staying in their home all the time and getting back to a physical event, quite possibly in June of this next year, is that the core audience of, uh, of the LD micro uh, investors will come to the conference and they will be at the conference with the meetings and the one-on-ones and everything they do. But in addition to that, there'll be millions of investors that'll be watching this same 
uh, conference virtually. So they'll be able to participate virtually in this really large microcap conference uh, without physically being at the event. So our goal is to, you know, have the, uh, like, it'll be the, uh, an honor to get invited to the event. If you're a, you know, an investor that can get invited to the event and then everybody else will be able to watch, uh, virtually, over uh, over the system and participate and just ex it'll just expand the audience of exposure that we can provide for these companies which is really the goal you know all of these companies need exposure there's so many amazing ideas so many amazing entrepreneurs that are uh, working in these companies that they're they're real challenge is that they need people to understand who they are and what they're doing. So that's our, that's our goal over the next couple of years. And we, you know, we think that the, the, we haven't given any guidance on what we think that revenue will look like uh, over time, but we think it's substantial. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you, Ben. Hey, Chris, can you identify the one or two most important differentiating features Sequire has versus the competition? And then secondly, what's next on the product development uh, front for Sequire? Sure. So our biggest, you know, the biggest competition that we have come from larger platforms like iPrio and NASDAQ Insights. Um, the, the tools that they provide tend to be very dated in nature, where at the end of the quarter, uh, 45 days after the end of the quarter, I can see who the institution was that was participating in my uh, in my company and it would give me a sense from uh you know the last quarter what that looked like so that that that's why we built the system was because we felt there had to be a better way to get that data and that's a that's one of the main differentiators is the ability to understand who owns my stock now and how can i communicate with those people you know, uh, and also just tying into the ecosystem of the cap table of the company. So providing a deal center, providing an, uh, uh, the ability to manage your warrants and your options in all in one centralized location while providing this data around your institutional uh, ownership and your retail ownership in one platform is really, I think, what is the differentiator um, uh, for us on this platform. And then... On the roadmap, we have a whole year worth of uh, roadmap in the platform. People, our issuers will be able to use our platform for their quarterly conference calls, which will save them a lot of money. There'll be a direct integration into conferences. We're providing the, uh, the conference software at a very discounted uh, level for other people to throw conferences. So we'll, it'll be valuable for our issuers to be able to participate in those conferences. And, um, just we have a whole year's worth of stuff that I, I don't want to exactly give away today, but um, you know there is a lot of programmers that are working on this every single day, and uh, you know, and also a big differentiator is that we don't envision ever stopping the development of this. Where you know the the, the legacy platforms that are out there today have kind of defined themselves, and they've they've said, okay, here's what we are. We envision the the Sequire platform to continue to evolve and add new features over time. Great. Let, let me uh, jump in once more. So you have a fairly large debt uh, repayment schedule coming up. Can you address how you're going to uh, handle that? Yeah. So we have uh, around $10 million worth of marketable securities that are on the books. And the, the debt that's coming up uh, can be pushed three separate times. And uh, we've already been informed by many of the uh, investors that have that debt, that they, they, they wish to push that debt out. And so uh, what may appear like it looks like it's uh, due now in the, in the current environment uh, is actually not, not due at those exact dates. And plus the payments that we, that we recently made for the, uh, we paid back around uh, $7 million worth of that debt. The way that the, the contract reads for the debt is it comes off the first, the first payments of that debt. So uh, any of that, that debt got pushed back, even if people didn't want, if they did want their money back now, that payment went back towards paying the first uh, payments of that debt back. So this additional debt that will, that is out there uh, can extend for another uh, almost 24 months if the owners of the debt wish to have it do so. 
and many of them have indicated that they'd like that to happen. Thank you, Chris. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we are at time. So I want to thank Chris and our investor panelists for joining us today. And thank you so much for presenting Shrax. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Marissa. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks.